I'm Molly Armstrong. And I'm Garrett Lifweiss. And welcome to this week's episode of SBSN News. And welcome back. I hope you all have a happy holidays. A Merry Christmas, Hanukkah, Feliz Navidad, you know, whatever doesn't offend you. So, Molly, what did you get for Christmas? Um, I got a couple things. I got some clothes, some new shoes. My family got a new Xbox. What are some of the things that you got, Garrett? Well, Molly, I can tell you what I didn't get, and it was a gun. And that's good because I wouldn't be able to bring it to school. Neither would our teachers. But in some schools, teachers are allowed to carry weapons. It's creating quite the controversy. Our field reporter, Ruthie Wyant, has more on this. Thanks, Molly and Garrett. Today, many schools across the country have or are considering allowing teachers to carry concealed weapons due to the activity that we've had this past year. Fox8.com states school shootings have become a disturbing reality in Northeast Ohio and beyond. Since the Sandy Hook shooting, Ohio school districts are taking new steps to keep kids safe, including intensive training for school staff to carry guns in school. The course accumulates with force-on-force training, a series of drills and scenarios involving gunmen. The faster course starts with classroom trainings on topics including shooters' mindset, gun handling, and medical care. The course ends on the shooting range where participants must pass strict qualifications. For years, Ohio laws have prohibited guns on school grounds unless the school district authorizes specific individuals, including staff, to carry a gun. Ohio isn't the only state that allows armed school staff. Each has its own specific rules. Utah, for instance, allows anyone with a concealed carry permit, including school staff, to carry a gun in school buildings. According to Need Today, state lawmakers in nearly 20 states this spring are considered or have recently considered bills that would allow guns in K-12 schools or college campuses, including Colorado, Texas, Nevada, Florida, and Georgia. The CSGJusticeCenter.org says one policy that states have considered to prevent school violence and improve school safety is arming teachers. Back to you, Molly and Garrett. Thank you, Ruthie. Garrett, do you think teachers should be allowed to carry guns in school? That's, that's a toughie. Um, right now, I really don't have an opinion on it, but I just want to see how far it gets and what happens, and then my opinion might change. Yeah, I didn't have an opinion on it either until I watched Ruthie's segment, and it actually helped yes. educate me. Ruthie does give informers on world news very well. So, time for our next subject. Um, we have students job shadowing um, people in the workforce, and they're saying if they like it or not. And we have Hannah and Taryn with that subject. After you, Taryn. <laughs> Thanks, Garrett and Molly. Hannah and Taryn here with Kennedy Cooper and Casey Moore, and today we're going to discuss their experiences with the mentorship program. How are each of you today? I'm pretty good. I'm good. Good. What occupation have each of you shadowed? I shadowed a labor delivery nurse. And I shadowed an optometrist, which is an eye doctor. Where are each of you doing your job shadowing? I did my job shadowing at Adina in Chillicothe. I did mine at Dr. Monohan's office in Waverly. Have you enjoyed it so far? Yes. Yeah. Have you had any hand, hands-on experience? Oh, uh, well, my program was hands-off, but I still learned a whole lot. Mine, I actually got to look inside of a human eyeball. That's great, guys. Do you see yourself pursuing this career? Uh, you know, I still haven't made my decision yet, but it really helped me in the process. I'm not 100% sure yet, but it's a good possibility. And would you recommend the mentorship program? Yes, it definitely, yes. Yes. Well, that's all the time we have for you today. Thank you guys so much for your time. And thank you guys for watching. Taryn and Hannah with SBSN News, signing out. Thank you, Hannah and Taryn. Molly, aren't you in the mentorship program? I am. I actually got to job shadow a labor and delivery nurse at Adina and Chilla Coffee for 12 hours. And it really helped me decide if I want to choose that as my career. You should definitely try to do it next year, Garrett. I might. It sounds, it sounds fun. And all of you guys should also try to do it. And if I wanted to do it next year, Molly, who should I contact? 
Um, Valerie Newman is the head coordinator of the mentorship program. She works at SON, she's the lead teacher. And so anybody that wants to try to do the mentorship program this year can contact her. All right, awesome. Now time for our next subject. There's a virtual reality app or goggles that classrooms have been using to take virtual reality field trips. And Chance McNally has more on that subject. Out to you, Chance. Thanks, Gary and Molly. This week's tech topic is about virtual reality being introduced into the classroom. Virtual reality is a new technology that has been introduced to the public in these past few years. But this past year, it has started to be introduced into the classroom. Virtual reality can fully immerse the students into their work and subjects by allowing them to do activities like visit the Grand Canyon without having to leave their desk. Virtual reality will allow teachers to take their students on field trips, but they never have to leave their classroom and still gain the same amount of knowledge as if they would have actually been there. An example of this is a history teacher could take his whole class to a historical building they are learning about and never leave the room, and it would be just like being there. It has limitations as of right now, but in the future, scientists hope to create it to have limitless possibilities. I believe as we continue to use technology in the classroom, it will continue to give us the best education possible. This is Chance McNally with SVSN, signing out. Back to you, Molly and Garrett. Thank you, Chance. Now, Molly, I think that's the first piece of technology that Chance has done a report over that Python High School does not have yet. Hmm, I think it is. Maybe sometime in the future or next year, Piketon could start using virtual reality. That would be really cool. Now, let's take it out to our next segment. Everyone's favorite, Wigsy's Word of the Week. Liberty gibbets? Sorry. Okay. Okay. And then her grandma. So, back to Philadelphia in 1787, Congress is going to have two parts by camp. I said, stop the Flippity Jibbit! I am not going to do this anymore! Thanks, Wigsy! Now, before we take it out to the Sports Center team, we have a special announcement. The Christmas Village winner was. Whoville! Woo! Congratulations, guys, and congratulations to all of the people who participated. All of the villages were really special. They were great. If you didn't get first place, it doesn't matter. They all looked You're so You're all winners cool. in our hearts. Out to the Sports Center team. Welcome back! Welcome back to this episode of SBSN. I'm your sports anchor, Gabe Berkheimer. And I'm your other strop sanka. Bradley Circles. And Brad, what do we have coming up this week? Sports. Sports! We have sports to speak. Brad, tell me what sports we have. I think we have a, 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 a basketball. Basketball! Better duck, dip, dive, and dodge. And dodge again because we got dodgeball! But first, basketball! Basketball! Bryce Pearson has more on the holiday classic with boys and girls. Basketball. I'll see you, Bryce. Thanks, Brad and Gabe. Over the holiday break, the boys and girls had their holiday classic basketball games. This is my coverage. The boys holiday classic started on the 28th with a matchup against the Western Indians. At the half, it was a close game, but with Western leading 25-22. A high-scoring third quarter put the Indians up 40-33. to 
Louise started the build up for the Indians as the game ended in a 59 46 Indians win. The next night was a consolation game between the Streaks and the Eagles of Eastern. The Streaks started out of the gate hot, but down 28 24 at the half. The second half was a low scoring but very defensive game as the Eagles topped the Streaks 50 42. Next is the Girls Classic, which tipped off on the 22nd. It started with a first round matchup against that team up north, the Waverly Tigers. Although the Lady Streaks had some foul trouble, they still managed to control three quarters of the game. The game ended in an exciting finish as the Lady Streaks end the game on a 44-42 win. The championship game was between the Lady Streaks and the Lady Indians of Western. They had piped and leading 16-15 at the end of the first. After that, the Lady Streaks got into some deep foul trouble, which pushed the Lady Indians up 30-23 to at half. The game ended in a good effort for the Lady Red Streaks, but not enough as they fell short 53-35. to This is Bryce Pearson for SVSN, signing out. Back to you, Brad and Gabe. Thank you, Bryce, for that bouncing report. And in upcoming news, the Lady Red Streaks will take on Paint Valley the 7th at home at 5 o'clock. And on the 9th, they will play at Eastern at a time to be announced. And uh, we got boys basketball too, don't we, Gabe? Indeed we do. We got boys basketball. I believe they play the 8th yes. at home against Westfall. What time? And then uh, 7 a game. PM. Yeah, 7 p.m. And then uh, what's the next game there, Brad? It's the 15th. At home. Again. Against Paint Valley. Paint Valley. And they play a 745. It's such a weird time, so. But it is indeed a weird time. Lies one of the 642. Might as well be a quarter till eight. But to each man his own, as my aunt says. Well, anyway, uh, I've never played a dodgeball game. Never get a chance to, Bradley. Well, Kennedy Meredith has more with dodgeball before. Whoa! Before Christmas break. Time to dodge some balls. Out to you, Kennedy. A few Fridays ago, before we got off our Christmas break, our very own Piketon High School held their second annual dodgeball tournament. On December 18, 2015, in the new high school gym, 15 dodgeball teams fought to the finish to prove who was the best in the school. Freshman team Lady Squad 2.0 ended up winning it all in the intense final game. The crowd was wild and all teams played their hearts out. A few days after the tournament, I got to interview a player from one of the dodgeball teams that participated. Hi, I'm here with dodgeball superstar, Miss Danielle Cook. How are you, Mrs. Cook? I'm great. How are you doing, Kennedy? Good. Thanks for asking. So, what team were you on in this tournament? I was on the educators team. What crucial role do you think you played to the team? Well, my basic role was to not get hit with a ball as much as possible and collect as many balls and hand them off to people who could throw well. <laughs> That's a good tactic. So do you think you're going to play again next year? That is undetermined at this moment, um, so everyone's just going to have to wait and see. <laughs> okay, well thank you so much for your time, and I think I can say, as well as our whole school, that we're excited for tournaments in years to come. I'm Kennedy Meredith with SVSN News. Back to the studio. Whoa! You dodged that one very well, Gabe. I did. Thank you, Kennedy, for that dodging. Well, Brad, it's that time of the episode. Yes, it is. I have to get back to my bull riding. Do you? Yeah. Well, that's all the time we have for this episode. I'm your sports anchor, Gabe Burkheimer. And I'm your other anchor, Rodeo Bradley Sickles. And all you out there in the valley, keep it classy. But wait! One more thing. Come home! Goes for that. I don't even know what I'm talking. Okay. Well, our uh, our next. Thank you so much, and thank you for. Thanks, <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Video interviews. My American history. What?